Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amor Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to optimize uh, the code that we have written in the previous session. Right? In the previous session, what we have done, we have created a lot of predicates so that you know we just pass the behavior how the how we want to fill the form. Right? Uh, so we have just two predicates here. Like uh, in in one case, I will just enter the employee name and I will validate whether the error message is displayed for entering an invalid employee. Again, you can build on more predicates like, uh, like you wish and here this is a valid template where i enter all the valid values and i expect some uh, success message out of this right and uh, we are having a data provider here which basically uh, this particular line will load all the templates that we are using for the from the fixture factory and this we are having two user data and we need to pass two things one the test data and then the predicate how how the page should behave right uh, same way uh, this is just a test data uh, with all uh, with just the employee name and this is the predicate how it wants to behave so we are just passing these two things to the test method and the test is working absolutely fine and it's really really clean but one problem that we notice is uh, now the success message that we are um, you know not all the time we are validating success message in, in 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 the first case we are checking whether the error message is displayed properly right so uh, what kind of uh, let's say if this fails okay if i don't add the statement it will just tell expected true but phone false but i want to give some meaningful error message so i added this but this is not suitable for everything so what is the easiest thing to do right so easiest thing to do is uh, you can add private string error message and okay so even though this error message uh, you know we can say doesn't really belong here but you know this is the easy way out but you can also um, you know uh, we have other ways as well, but this is the easiest way out, right? So now, uh, once you have the uh, user data, you can also say uh, user data uh, dot get error message, right? And this is going to really solve the problem for us. Uh, only thing that we need to keep in mind is um, this error message uh, we need to, uh, you know, generate in the uh, template classes, right? So I, I think it's, it's template, right? Add user template. So let's go here. And for this one, we are expecting success message. So we will say add and then error message. And the message that we are expecting is basically success message is not displayed. Right. And here, let's copy this. Let's give it here. Error message. Um, then here. Maybe this should be message, uh, but yeah, we can do the refactoring like if you want. So let's say, let's take this message. And here, uh, error message is not displayed, whatever, right? And let's go to the user data class and just make it as message because sometimes we want to validate error message, sometimes it's a success message, right? So yeah, this is more reasonable. Now let's open the add user test and here we can simply say get message, right? So this is more. And what it's telling, it's telling replace lambda with method reference. We'll also do that. Yeah, so it's more and more readable now, right? Good. Now, the problem here is uh, if we have a lot of predicates, let's say 10 predicates, 10 behaviors that we want to pass, this class becomes more cluttered, right? And it's not really easy to maintain all these predicates here. And this tax uh, does a lot of things, right? Uh, instead of just having test method, maybe we can have the data provider here. Uh, but but these things are a little too much to be in the class. So what is a good approach? Uh, separate them into a different class. So I I always use enums for this so that um, you know managing these things becomes very easy. For example, uh, I have created an add user scenario type enum just to save some time. Uh, what I'm doing here is I created an enum uh, where uh, valid is one enum just employee name is another enum so this takes two parameters uh, like we know one is the predicate itself and another one is the data so we need the behavior and then the data for this also we need the behavior and then we need the data okay so for data i'm just hard coding it here but for the predicate again if i put it here in this class it's again doing too much of things so i what i did is i created an add user predicate factory um, and and have all these predicates there right and this uh, you know has two instance variables and it also has a constructor where i'm sitting this one 
right? And I'm also exposing getter methods so, so that I can access these individual components, right? Let's go to this add user predicate factory. Uh, so this predicate factory means it, it has a lot of predicates and based upon your input, it'll give you the predicate back, right? So now I have a map that stores the string. Let's say we want valid. Let's say somebody is telling, give me a valid template. So it's going to give you a valid predicate. If somebody is telling, hey, give me a predicate for just employee name or string, I'm going to give you that. Again, you can also make this as an enum, but for now, I'm going a much simpler way, right? Again, this supplier implementation is optional. You can also not do supplier here and then rather directly use bracket gate. But the reason why I have used supplier interface implementation is uh, this will be lazily evaluated. So only when you call this method, this will get evaluated. So we are uh, doing lazy evaluation, saving some efforts and time, right? Um, so again, guys, I just moved all the, whatever the predicates we have there in the test class to here. And then in the static block, I'm storing them in the map. So, so there is a map. Okay. This is the map that I have initialized. I'm just putting a uh, key value as valid and the value as valid predicate. Okay. I just added this, you know, uh, Lambda before so that it's, it's a supplier implementation. Again, if you, if you don't like this, you can also remove this supplier stuff. Okay, you can remove this. And then you can simply say, sorry, like this. Okay, it's, it's up to you, how do you want it? But supplier implementation is the better implementation, right? Uh, so good, so now this method is very simple. Somebody is telling, hey, give me a predicate matching the string. So you have to pass valid or just apply name. That's it, it's going to fetch you this, right? That's it. So now let's go to the same scenario type class. So that's what we are doing. For valid valid enum, we want this valid predicate, right? And for the uh, data, we want the valid data. So just by using uh, a key as valid, we are fetching both the values. Same here, the key is just employee name. So it will fetch me the predicate. This will fetch me the data. So we want the behavior, we want the data. Both are getting stored in this enum, that's it. Now, if I go here to the add user test, here, I don't have to maintain all these things here because this is too much uh, to be here. And uh, instead, what I can do is, again, uh, so we are we are getting all these things. We don't have to do all these things here because these are all coming from our enum, right? So I can simply say uh, return stream uh, stream dot right of and what is the enum name? So enum name is add user scenario type dot values. So if I say this, it will going to fetch me all the values. Let's say for now we have only two values. So this will give me both the values, right? If there's hundred, it's going to give all the hundred for us. Good. But I just need to change the return type. If I just change the return type, I cannot use data provider because data provider will only support uh, two dimensional object array or iterator of object array. So I'm using data supplier. That's it. So now instead of two inputs, we are going to pass only one input, right? So that input is going to be of this type, right? And here I will simply say uh, add user data dot get user data. Same way add user data, get predicate. And here add user. Uh, get user data dot get message, right? So now this is well and good. Again, for the supplier implementation, I can provide this. Right? Uh, good. So now the test looks much clean. We have just the data provider and the, and the test itself, right? Uh, again, guys, uh, it's up to you how you want to do the implementation, but I find this very, very clean. So if there is a change in predicate, I change the predicate here. If there is a change in the template, I will go the, to the template class. I change the template here. So it's everything is very well managed. And if you want to uh, build a lot of combinations out of this, I can go to the scenario type and I can build combinations from this, right? So it's pretty, pretty easy. If there is any change in the test, I can do just the change in this test, right? Let's test whether this is working fine, right? Again, there is scope for improvement here as well because we can use JUnit5 and enum source, uh, which, which can uh, you know even give a lot of, bit, lot of other benefits. So now it's it's basically opening the browser for us. 
Yeah. So we can also run this test in parallel, obviously. So I think, yeah, uh, the tests have actually uh, ran and maybe there are some failure because uh, maybe some wait times that we have to configure, uh, which we didn't do it yet. Um, so, but, but for us, the, both the tests are running. So yes, so now we have optimized the test class in, in a much neater way, but uh, there is still scope for optimization. One, you can use JUnit 5. Two, the other problem is, let's say if you are having 100 combinations and every time it will log into the application, it navigate to those pages and then it will fill these details, right? Uh, uh, there is one advantage and one disadvantage in this. Oh, one disadvantage is every time it is doing all these steps, which are redundant. The, the main test here is to fill uh, details into the forms and check how it responds, right? Um, so we can pass a list of predicates that we want to do here, and then we can iterate those predicates one by one. So we just open this page once, okay? And then we iterate a list of predicates here. That's one approach. Uh, but the problem here is, um, let's say if it fails somewhere, right? Um, we might not even know uh, what about the other predicates, other behaviors, how it has worked. So that's the problem with that. Uh, the second approach is what we are doing here. Like, let's say for every predicate, uh, every behavior, we are, we are running each iteration. In this case, the benefit is if something is failing, that doesn't matter. Other behaviors are still evaluated and we get the results. So it's up to you, like how you want to, let's say if you want to optimize the time, um, we can still use, um, you know, uh, run in parallel, uh, always, oh, sorry. You can go to the data supplier and you can say run in parallel equal true which can basically save the time. So I prefer writing like this. So instead of using list of predicates, I rather prefer to pass predicates every time and run number of iteration. Let's say uh, 10 iterations, that's fine for me because I can run the test in parallel. Uh, so I don't worry about the time, right? I, at the end, I want the result of all of them. So I, I, I will see you guys in another great video. Uh, I, I will optimize this code much, uh, even further with JUnit 5. Um, that will be really interesting, right? So we'll do that in the next video. Thanks again for listening to me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Uh, thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye.